Just left a leftover turkey from Thanksgiving out with my crows out there. I guess if you follow me, you know I've got a, a murder, which is what a family of crows is called, a murder of crows, out in my backyard. And for the past two years, I've been bringing them every day. I bring them a bag of peanuts, shelled peanuts, which they like. But I've since found out they'll eat anything. So uh, we had this left, you know, after a while, man, you can only eat so much turkey. So we had it left over. There's only the two of us. And I brought it out there. And so you can hear them. If you can't hear them in the background, I'm sorry, but they're out there screaming and yelling and uh, doing whatever it is crows do. Uh, so anyway, speaking of animals, I checked this story out from top to bottom. I just want to make sure I wasn't getting involved in another one of these ridiculous uh, internet stories that had no foundation. This is a true story. Lawrence Anthony was an acclaimed conservationist. He was a best-selling author and an environmentalist. He was founder and owner of Thula Thula, exclusive prime private game reserve in Zululand in Natal. In 1999, he was asked to accept a herd of wild elephants, and he did. The herd of elephants would have been killed if he didn't accept them because they were difficult. They had escaped from other enclosures, quote, leaving a trail of havoc across Zwa Zulu Natal. So Anthony said, by treating the elephants like children, trying to persuade them with words and gestures, showing them that they shouldn't be misbehave and that they could trust me. He focused his attention on the leader of the herd, Nana. I'd go down to the fence and I'd plead with Nana not to break it down, he said. I knew she didn't understand English, but I hoped she'd understand by the tone of my voice in my body language that what I was saying. And one morning, instead of trying to break the fence down, she just stood there. Then she put her trunk through the fence towards me. I knew she wanted to touch me. That was the turning point. There are two elephant herds at Thula Thula Game Reserve, and according to Anthony's son Dylan, both herds arrived at the house after Anthony's death. He said they had not visited the house for a year and a half. It had taken them about 12 hours to make the journey. They all hung around for about two days when my dad died before making their way back into the bush. In their mourning for his death, the elephants remained outside Anthony's home for two days and two nights without any food. The next morning, they left as mysteriously as they, be, as they came and began their journey back home. According to his wife, Frances Melby, Anthony, and several journalists, the elephants, his devoted friends, have since returned, listen to this, Every year since his death on the same day, March 7. Wow. Isn't that incredible?